Good morning, everyone. It is a, a sunny, a little, little cold, but sunny and beautiful nonetheless day in uh, Northwest Arkansas. My name is Matt Pfeiffer. I'm the founder and CEO of Supplier Community, and you're here this morning for uh, another uh, in our series that we call Fast Pitch. This morning, we've got uh, a good friend of mine, Ken Drish from Trax Retail, joining us to talk about uh, their business and how they're working with supplier teams. A couple things to that I want to uh, Call your attention to uh, as we um, as we get started and as Ken brings his his slides up. Uh, first and foremost, if you're a Connect member, welcome uh, to you all this morning. Our Connect membership is essentially an all access pass to every one of our uh, classes and, and other events, as well as access to video on demand for a growing library of, of content that we're so excited about. We've got some other really cool things. Uh, one that we've already announced a program called Fifth Thursday, which is a leadership development series that will be kicking off on April 29th. We've also got some really cool things from a career planning uh, and career development standpoint we'll be announcing next week. We're adding content to new services, uh, discounts and deals from a lot of service providers. So making that membership more and more valuable uh, each and every week. So if you're not already a Connect member and you've got questions about that, uh, please contact me and I'd love to share with you a little bit more about it. The second thing I would say is um, we love questions. Um, the presenters love questions. And if you've got questions during Ken's presentation this morning, I would encourage you to ask them anytime using the Q&A button uh, within Zoom. Go ahead and submit those questions. And then, uh, in fact, we've already received a couple, and we will take those at the end. So, Ken, uh, thank you so much for making the time to uh, talk with us this morning. I'm anxious to learn more about Trax, and I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate it. And uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you all for uh taking your time um, today to uh, be here for, uh, for Fast Pitch. Matt, thank you for, uh, for hosting this, uh, what I think is a pretty cool, unique way uh, for, especially in this day and age, for suppliers and, uh, and providers to get their message out. So um, I joined Trax Retail in July of uh, 2020 um, and really spent my career in the traditional sales and marketing um, agency space. So I've worked for companies like Crossmark and Acosta, um, driveline and spar. If I haven't worked for them, I've competed against them. Um, so I was attracted uh, or, or um, recruited to Trax um, to help lead the selling effort for what Trax calls dynamic merchandising. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen now. Trax if, if, is, is fairly well known um, on a global level and here in the United States as a company that um, provides um, image recognition. And historically we've sold um, that as a kind of a SaaS program image recognition to CPG companies and to retailers to help them better understand what's going on at the shelf by taking images, running those images through an image recognition engine, and then um, delivering insight, um, all sorts of things about the shelf, the share of shelf, uh, planogram integrity, uh, brand blocking, pricing, POSM material, et cetera. Um, we've always sold that solution um, as an enterprise solution to the CPG company to put in the hands of their own reps um, or um, into the hands of their, their agency partners. We had never had until um, last year an opportunity to have kind of a, a closed end solution. Um, we acquired a company in March of 2020, survey.com, which essentially has been in the on-demand um, national flexible um, retail execution force. Think of it as kind of the Uber Lyft model um, for in-store execution. So combining um, Trax's capabilities with survey's capabilities, now all under one roof, um, really allows us to be able to go to the marketplace now with a complete in-store execution solution. So said another way, um, Trax is now in the retail execution um, game today and, and um, can compete now against the um, traditional types of agencies that are out there. And what we'd like to call, kind of call, you know, this new solution is really kind of reimagining retail uh, and in-store execution. So um, I try and look at things from the the standpoint of, of how this differs, um, and I try and present how this differs compared to the traditional agency model of which I've spent my career in. And, and typically when a brand uses a traditional agency, they're, they're really um, renting a sliver of time that that agency may be in, um, in stores. Um, we, we think it's, it's largely defensive um, in nature. Um, you know, we think that sometimes that sliver of time is not always what is needed. Um, sometimes it's not needed at all, um, but they're, they're still forced to kind of be in that. Um, and, and really brands today, we, we, we believe that brands really need, you know, kind of fast, flexible, customized coverage, obviously delivered with high quality execution, and then leverage data and insights um, from that 
um, to not only you know tell you what was executed in the store, but also even drive and design that coverage model. There's there's things that we can glean in advance of planning a retail coverage um, cycle or or, or visit um, plan that can help really direct and prescript where um, our forces need to go and where the, where the reps need to go. Um, I will tell you too, if, if you think about the traditional agency model, um, while there have been advances, largely um, they have been executing at retail the same way for decades, right? Um, you know, we need four weeks of lead time. We have the syndicated model and you, the CPG company, need to kind of fit into that box. Um, what, we'd like to, what we'd like to do is be able to, um, you know, develop a customized solution um, for the individual brands. So that's what dynamic merchandising is really all about. It's, it's really a artificial intelligence and data-driven approach, leveraging this nationwide kind of localized on-demand um, workforce to go in and execute things that you would traditionally need executed that you would be getting from your traditional agency. Um, we want to deliver that in a very transparent and quantified model. Um, and I'll show you a case study at the end of this, which will kind of demonstrate that and then give you actionable and impactful reporting that gives you insights, not only to what we did in the store, but the store conditions. So how does that kind of look on a national scale? So this nationwide force um, that we have brought together uh, essentially looks like this. We have roughly 45,000 trained kind of skill-based representatives that are working for us on a weekly basis across the entire country. Um, I mentioned there, we, we cover 99% of the US zip codes, uh, but this type of workforce, kind of this crowd forces gig for, type of force really provides you a couple of incredibly key benefits. We have tremendous scale um, for one. So we can, we're typically deploying in areas where others either can't or won't. Um, we have tremendous speed. Um, we can literally deploy in days versus weeks. I'll tell you a case study here in a few minutes that talks about how that's demonstrated. Um, a couple of key points of difference with this team when we deploy a rep on behalf of a, of, of a CPG client, they are only going into that store on your behalf. So if it's General Mills, that is all that rep is doing for that visit. It is a General Mills visit. So they're not part of a uh, kind of a traditional syndicated model where the General Mills has a portion of that visit. We work with you on the scope of work and that's all that rep does for that visit. Another key point of difference is 100% of all of the visits are quality control checked. So what do I mean by that? So we have a combination of machine learning and human beings that are literally looking at every um, report that comes in, every photo that comes in to ensure that one, we actually did the job that we were supposed to do, and two, that we did it to, a, to the level of quality that was expected by the client. I could tell you that in my, in my history of doing this kind of work, at best at the traditional agencies I worked for, we maybe had 10% of the visits quality control check. At worst, we were essentially throwing that reporting over the wall um, for, the for the client to quality control check and, and, and measure. So 100% quality control is, is a huge piece here. Um, the other um, and last piece that I'll say here is all of our reps are required to have a smartphone. All of our work is delivered via our application, um, but they have to have that smartphone. They have to have their location services on. And why that's important is because we are um, genuinely geofencing that location and that phone to ensure that that rep is actually in that store when they say they are. So it's kind of the ultimate transparency and really traceability. So that's essentially kind of how the model, how the model works and how it comes together. Um, what can this team do? Essentially, as I mentioned, everything that you would, you would traditionally need in the store, whether it's basic things like putting up point of sale um, or it's more complex things like doing a complex reset or a fixture build, um, or it's you know even even brand representation and selling in um, selling in products into an independent store or a franchise store. So um, the way that our model works is the rep when they come onto the platform they fill out a profile which basically outlines what they say that they are skilled in, where they want to work, when they want to work, um, and then we initially when we deploy them we will deploy them to more of kind of a rudimentary task. And what we're trying to do is really trust but verify. So we're trying to establish that that rep, you know, actually completed the work that they said they were and they do have the experience they have. Um, and each one of those visits are rated. Um, those reps will get more and more work um, provided they provided a quality visit and they'll get expanded and have more and more badges of types of things they can do. So they may be badged to be able to put up POP. They may be badged um, to do reset work, et cetera, and maybe badge to be a brand ambassador. So um, what we do is we continuously build this database. So when we are aligning um, reps to be deployed for particular work, 
um, that we know that their skill base um, is there to be able to um, execute that work the way that it was supposed to. Also, unlike other crowd companies, this work isn't just thrown out to the masses um, for them uh, in our crowd to, to take. We essentially leverage the, those profiles that I was talking about, and we schedule people so we ensure that we're aligning the right skill set um, with, uh, with the job that's out there. So future state, right? What, what, what can we ultimately do by leveraging the tracks image recognition with this, with this huge flexible um, field force? The future state is really being able to have the rep go in and leverage our image recognition technology to inform and direct them on what they need to do in the store. So let's just use General Mills as our example. Um, we have independent grocery stores that we're going into and say it's AWG and General Mills has, we know that they've, they've got 300 items that get pulled through the AWG warehouse, but obviously because of the size of the store, you're not going to have all of those, but boy, you've got to have the top SKUs. You've got to have Wheaties, you've got to have Cheerios. Well, in the traditional model, um, a rep would go in, they'd have an authorized list, those top SKUs, they'd look at the shelf, then they'd look at the, the, their list and then do that back and forth, doing all this manual work before they get to the point of being able to actually go to the decision maker and try and sell in missing items or distribution voids. Now, imagine a scenario where the rep now takes a photo of the category and within less than a minute, that photo goes through our image recognition in the cloud and comes back to that rep telling them what items are out of stock, what items are not set to planogram, what items are not uh, priced right. So it, it takes all that manual work out and then they are able to dedicate their time to literally going in and um, trying to close the void, which is the ultimate objective of the call. So that's kind of the future state, the big vision. This is in pilot right now. We know the image recognition technology works really well. It's just ensuring that it works to the point where we can get that quick of a response. Um, that's uh, that we call our shelf fix solution. So that's really kind of where we're going big picture, but that doesn't preclude us from being able to activate for you now, um, doing any kind of retail project that, yeah, that you would need. And I'll just give you a couple of case studies to close out and then we can get into the, into the Q and A. Um, Mondelez came to us, they had a, a program in 7-Eleven. Uh, they had identified 1400 stores where the, some of their um, key confection and snack items fell out due, uh, due to supply chain issues at the beginning of the pandemic. So we had that data of where those stores were zero sales. And the way that we execute uh, void closure programs, especially in franchise or independent environments where it's really up to that store, uh, they, they can choose what they wanna carry. Um, we visited the whole set of 1,409 stores once uh, for, the, for the first time. But then we start by process of what we're finding out in the store, we start weeding out stores that are just simply not gonna be a fit. They're, not, they're, they're just simply not going to order that product. So we then reduce that amount of stores. So we're going into only the stores that have the highest likelihood on the second visit, and then on the third visit, and then finally all the way down to the fourth visit. So what we're doing is essentially utilizing the data, the real conditions, the likelihood of the store buying the product to really narrow it down to make sure that we're spending time where we know we got the highest probability to close the SKUs. Um, fast forward net net, we activated 1,065 SKUs. Um, that was roughly, uh, we activated um, SKUs in 47% of the stores where it wasn't uh, done before. And overall, working with Mondelez, we were able to look at their sales data as well to determine what a true ROI was. So with those five SKUs at a run rate achieved in 52 weeks, they were able to achieve a 4X ROI for them. So the, the process here, completely different than that of a traditional agency that, that is, would really kind of be a, more of a one size fits all, visit all the stores until you get um, the objective done. Ours is much more data driven and targeted uh, based on what we see in the stores. And then the last case study that I'll share with you really kind of just speaks to our speed. This was a, a leading dairy brand in New York City last year, came to us on a Thursday. They had about 4,000 stores in the boroughs of New York and also in Long Island um, where they had a deficiency in their display that needed, it was a quick fix, but it needed to be corrected and needed to be corrected very quickly. Within three days, so Thursday, we, we didn't have a relationship with them. We developed a relationship, signed a contract. By Sunday evening, we were in 3,700 stores out of the 40, out of the 4,000 um, that were needed. So when you talk about speed and scale uh, and flexibility, that's what this type of model brings to the table. So I, bringing it all the way back to what I talked about in the beginning, it really is reimagining retail execution um, because in COVID really identified this and highlighted it. Um, things changed and they changed rapidly. 
we saw clients stopping, you know, programs, but then again, having to spin them up very quickly. And unless you have a, an elastic force that can do that, it's very difficult within the confines of a traditional model to do that today. So just kind of to recap, you know, we kind of envision ourselves as being kind of this always on partner, um, being able to provide immediate execution solutions to your problems really anytime, anywhere. Um, launching within a matter of hours uh, rather than days or weeks. Um, the elasticity and the, and the fact that the rep goes in and they're dedicated, um, we have the ability to um, efficiently solve your problems, whether they take 15 minutes or they take five hours for a, a major reset. And then the information that we're collecting on the back end, really key to um, be transparent uh, with our clients, but also to be able to measure the impact of, uh, of what we've done on your behalf for a particular program or store. And with that, I would be um, happy to take questions. Yeah, great, Ken, good job. Um, learned, learned a lot, quite honestly, and your vision for the future. I, the question for me, I guess, is that, that pilot program you're working on now that allows you to scan a picture of the side counter and to basically bring back the exceptions so you don't have to manually spot them. How, how far would you say that's away? Oh, uh, Q2 uh, of this year. Uh, Q1 is the pilot. Q2, we will, um, we will measure the impact. Um, it'll be commercialized and ready to go um, in Q3 uh, of this year. That's incredible. Uh, so a couple of questions that have come in. One from Clay says, is Trax recognized as a Walmart PSP? That's a great question. So we are not a, a, a PSP. However, we do work in Walmart. We're actually doing wal work in Walmart um, as we speak, uh, assisting some other agencies in their remodels. Because we send the rep in as a, uh, a dedicated uh, rep, we're essentially going in as a manufacturer's rep. And we know today that manufacturer's reps, whether it's uh, Mattel or Hasbro, um, still have the ability to go in as, you know, and, and execute work as they are a direct um, representative of that manufacturer. We say ourselves as no different. You, uh, another question, Ken, you, you spoke earlier to a program, 4,000 stores, you're able to get in 3,700 stores with plus within a couple of uh, two, three days. What's your typical lead time needed to, to execute your service? Yeah, typically we, we like to have, um, you know, in, in a perfect world, we like to have a couple of weeks, right? Depending on the complexity of the program, a couple of weeks is usually great. Um, but honestly, with the ever-changing world of the retail landscape these days, um, and, and really, I pin a lot of this on the retailers, you know, not making decisions until the last minute and, and, and changing things up until the last minute. Um, we've really begun to live in a world where a week or less is the new normal. Hmm. Mike asks, how have traditional field marketing agencies responded to your solution? Hmm. It's a great question. Um, ironically, we've partnered with several traditional marketing agencies that have gone in and, and sold large um, field-based or, or reset-based programs, remodel-based programs, and they just simply can't um, provide enough staff. So we're a good option for them to turn to to get qualified um, reps in to assist them with the program that they have already essentially sold into a retailer. So um, I completely see us as competitive um, to um, the traditional agencies that are out there today. Um, and, and imagine that um, hopefully there will, there will come a, a time where we are um, in the majority of the consideration sets for that type of work. So follow-up question, uh, without being a PSP, uh, do you, are your reps able to access the back rooms of Walmart stores? Do they need to set up something with the vendor and retailer uh, to get signed off? Uh, typically the way that we handle that today is we will uh, work with the manager um, and, and let them know that we're there on behalf of X brand X. Um, and in order to complete our task for that visit, um, we will need to access the back room. And honestly, we've not had a ton of pushback. I mean, stores um, still, and as long as I go back in my career and remember, um, stores see us a lot of times as somebody that can help. Yeah, uh, great questions. Keep them, keep them coming. The next one. How often do your reps visit retailers? Obviously, that's going to be different on a retailer by retailer basis and depending on project load. But typically, how often would you have people inside stores? Yeah, that's that's a that's a really great question. So we have we have uh, roughly forty five to fifty thousand people that are working for us every week, being deployed across all sorts of channels: C store, grocery, mass, 
um, you know, airports. I mean, we, 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 we can, that's what the unique thing about this model is it's not fixed in its nature. So there's no routine cadence. Now, can we, do we develop routine cadences for some customers? Absolutely. Um, we have, we have programs where we're ongoing in Target or we're ongoing in, in Kroger. Um, but it, it's different in that of a, a traditional agency where I'm, where I'm coming to you saying we cover Walmarts every week or we cover Targets every two weeks. So um, it's really at the determination of our clients. Another question, uh, are retailers themselves interested in getting access to your, to your data? Do you have any direct retail relationships in place? We do, um, and, and we, we plan to have more and more. We have a product as an organization, as, as Trax organization called Retail Watch. Um, and we've got uh, about seven partnerships globally. Um, one here uh, in North America with Soriana. Uh, but Retail Watch is a, is a program where we affix cameras to the shelf edge, um, very small cameras, um, or we affix them to uh, existing robots uh, that are in the stores. There's still retailers that are using robots. Um, and what we're doing with that is we're leveraging our search engine technology or image recognition technology um, to literally take photos of a four foot section every minute. And what that's doing is it's feeding a stream of data back to the retailer to tell the rep instead of the rep, uh, instead of the store manager saying, hey, Jim, go stock the frozen section. It's telling Jim, here are the three things that are out of stock that you need to go and pack out because we know the inventory is in the back room. So mm -hmm. we're using that image recognition to really kind of automate the process. Um, of moving store labor. We are also in partnership with Blue Yonder, uh, which is the old JDA organization. Um, JDA also sells a workforce management tool. Um, in fact, Walmart is one of their clients. Um, so it's a tool that helps Walmart's uh, schedule uh, their associates in the stores. Uh, but a lot of open shifts still go unfilled. Um, so we're, our, we're leveraging the, the track survey crowd um, to be able to help fill some of those open shifts. So that's a that's a program that we've just kind of spun up. So uh, we'd have a situation where the retailer, if they can't fill a shift, maybe they can leverage somebody from our crowd to come in and stock the shelves that day. Hmm. Uh, Mike asks, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing Mike, so forgive me, but this, this seems like a no brainer. The CPG companies that are saying no to you all, why, why are they saying no? In what ways would you be maybe not the right or the best partner Man, I'm, re I'm really glad you asked that question because it, it really speaks to um, one of the challenges that we do um, have sometimes, although it's less and less. Um, but a lot of times a CPG uh, company will say, well, your reps are independent contractors. So they're obviously not trained. Um, they're temporary. You know, the, you know, the, they're not as good as my qualified, skilled person. And in, and in some respects, when you're comparing an independent contractor to a, uh, a full-time um, Samsung direct individual, sure, they're the full-time Samsung individual that lives, breathes, and eats Samsung every day is probably going to have a better skill set. But I will, but I will tell you that the independent contractors that we do bring on, and we do have some employees in states like California where the employment laws are um, uh, force us kind of to do that. But but in the independent contractor model, it's it's just a different mindset. They're they they tend to be more entrepreneurial. They tend to be more technology driven. Um, they, they, I, I tell the example all the time, every time I get in an Uber or a Lyft, I ask that individual, do you just work for Uber or do you just work for Lyft? And nine times out of 10, the, the response I get is, no, I own another business and I'm doing this as a side hustle. And, or, I, or I do, I've got five of these types of gigs that I do. They're much more flexible, they're focused. And the quality control that we put in place really helps ease the challenge that that person is not going to be trained or skilled. So we, in the rating system that we put in place. So we really leverage technology in ways that I did not know exist um, with my background in traditional agencies until I came to, until I came to tracks. Okay. We had three questions come in almost at the same time uh, about pricing. And I'm gonna read them all three to you because the, the questions are, are slightly different, but one asks, is there a ballpark cost on a per store basis? Uh, the second is, what does the project pricing look like? So project pricing. And then uh, the third is, uh, is there a rate per store? Um, do you set up contracts with vendors? So kind of talk about pricing and that relationship uh, with, with, with supplier teams. Sure. The answer to all three of those questions is yes, um, <laughs> from an overall perspective. But pricing is really driven um, by the scope of the program. It's driven by the geography of the stores uh, that you're asking us to do. 
It's driven by the potential uh, long-term nature. Uh, is, it, is it an ongoing program or is it a one-time hit or is it four one-time hits over a, an annual basis? Um, typically the pricing is hourly um, or fixed based on the scope of work. Um, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna publish what our, what our rates are here today. I will just tell you that we are incredibly competitive um, for the type of speed and scale that we can provide. Any future idea around crowdsourcing pictures before the rep goes to the store to capture them? Yeah, 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 great, good, good question. I, I, and, I, and I'm gonna answer it a couple of ways. But one, I wanna make sure that the, the, uh, the audience knows that we are really an on-demand merchandising company. Um, not just an on-demand audit only company, right? So, you know, um, and that should have came through very clear throughout the, throughout the presentation, but I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, but there is um, thought process around all of the different photos that we do collect, whether we're doing merchandising work or we're doing um, auditing work, et cetera. There is this idea of continuously building out this massive image library to ultimately be able to potentially commercialize that um, to sell that data on a category category level. One of the other organizations that we purchased um, in the last couple of years, an organization called Shopkick, um, which is a shopper marketing agency that leverages um, consumers um, to activate a lot of brands. Um, and those folks collect photos. So the, yeah, the idea that we can pull together all of these photos into a repository to continue to build this robust image recognition um, database is definitely something not lost on us. Thanks, Matt. I, I really appreciate the time. I, uh, and for the audience, I really appreciate the, the questions. Um, those always get me excited. I love talking about the business and um, I thought they were really great questions. And the main thing uh, that I hope everyone takes away that is Tracks is now um, firmly in the game of retail execution as a credible resource um, to deliver um, your needs out there. So I, I, I welcome an opportunity. Uh, Matt, I'm sure you'll include my contact information and what gets sent out. Um, be happy to uh, have further conversations. Thank you. We will. We, we will. But go ahead and share your contact information for those that are, uh, you know, that are with us now. Sure. Yeah. I, in fact, what I'll do is I'll put it in the chat. All right. Ken Drish of Tracks Retail. Thank you so much for joining us. For everyone that's with us, we'll see you again soon. Have a great day.